this book belongs to me. Hello, journal. Is it okay if I call you that? It's a bit formal, I know. But we've only just met. Let me introduce myself. I'm Isabel Barbara Cook. Most people call me Izzy, not Dad. He calls me Titch. He's such a numpty head. My little brother Ben calls me Isbo. I call him he who chews curtains. He likes red for breakfast and blue for dinner. And then there's... Mom, my top tea drinking buddy. my tea and this is Pinky. I think she's jealous of you, Journal. Today's my birthday. Dad made his best cake. Mum and Gran started the singing. Ben gurgled along. I blew out the candles. And made a wish. Since I was little, I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. This is where you come in, journal. A writer writes. No one ever got anything just by wanting it. Gran said writing is about exploring your thoughts. Helps you unlock your feelings. I'd like to write something that will make Gran smile. She always talks about little acorns growing into big trees. Is that to make me feel better about my height? Or 
about my writing? I want to write a story, but what kind? A romance? Science fiction? A comedy? A drama? Fairy tales? Wait, we're getting somewhere. A fantasy story. So, how do I start my fantasy story? Once upon a time. Ugh, no one said this would be easy. A game. From the top. Not so far away. In the land of... Astoria. A place of peace and magic. There lived a girl named... Robin! Everyone knew her by the bright color. Of her red dress. She was ready to begin her adventure. In fact, she'd been preparing for it her whole life. For she was the only apprentice of the village guardian, Elder Ava. Everyone was very fond of Robin. Her heart was full of curiosity and compassion. The villagers agreed that no one was... as kind as her. Too far away in the land of Astoria. There lived a young girl named Robin. She was kind and loved taking care of the world around her. Suddenly, a faint speck of light floated down and began to buzz around Robin. Hello, little firefly. Did you come for my birthday? Oh, Elder Ava's gonna be so happy! Let's head back to the village. The firefly shared Robin's excitement. I was also planning to make Elder Ava fruit punch in secret. Maybe we can find some more berries on the way back, Firefly. That's a juicy one. Good job, Firefly. Will be perfect. Another! Do fireflies drink punch? Come on, firefly! The village is just a bit further down. Wah! I love doing that. The bridge was an old, 
creaky affair. Careful, Robin. Careful. Robin imagines shark fins circling below. Phew, we made it, Firefly. And... Down! Robin knew many secret paths back to the village. Like this one! She loved feeling the roots around her, as if the tree was giving her a gentle hug. Nearly there, Firefly. Just one more little slide. Here we go! The old cargo lift, barely used. Her own secret entrance to the village above. Robin couldn't wait to give Elder Ava a hug. She'd be so proud that her Firefly came. Look, Firefly. Happy birthday, Robin. I've made a new friend. One of our sacred fireflies. This is a very special thing indeed. Does this mean...? Yes, it is time. Would you fetch me that box, please? Ava was sure that Robin would rise to the occasion. Go ahead, open it. This will store all the magic words you find. Some will stay with you, others are fleeting. They will help you overcome any obstacle. Now, your training is complete. Congratulations, new guardian of the fireflies. Guardian? But that's you. Guardian in retirement now. You should head to the Shrine Tree for the other Firefly's blessing. I'll join you shortly, dear. something of mine to mark the occasion. Elsa Ava reached inside her pocket and handed Robin a gift. Ava's favorite pendant, set with a giant... Sapphire! Now, off you go. Magic book. And all at once, 
Robin was surrounded by the hustle and bustle of village life. Robin loved throwing stones over the rooftops, that was but not today. Today, the Robin firefly shrine was waiting. Oh, Go on. She looked over her bustling treetop village. I heard you had a bit of leaf mold. This was all she knew. Yeah, Elder Bassus gave me a poultice. Did it work? Cleared it right And up. it was home. Looks better than ever. Smell that. That's the scent of paradise. I can always use more paradise. Takes in. But inside, she was still curious. Hey, Robin. Happy birthday. No, you can't have a magic book. Good to see you, Robin. But Robin has one. Well, that's different. She's special. But you say I'm special. Careful, careful. No need to rush. about the world that lay beyond. The bridge swayed in the warm breeze. Its slats creaked with a gentle familiarity as Robin crossed it. Seen that book for a while, Robin. You have to see the fireflies. Let me get the gate. Ah, blast! Robin couldn't wait to see the fireflies. Soon they'd bless her. As new village guardian. What's being guardian going to be like, Firefly? I hope it's adventurous. Let's swing into adventure. Robin crawled through the dank, dark tunnel. It didn't feel like being hugged at all. Bell to announce her arrival. At last, the tree was in sight, home to the fireflies, whose ancient energy kept the village safe from harm. Go on, show them what you can do. Use your word magic to get to the fireflies. That's it! They're accepting their new guardian. At last, I can get a lion. Glowing light surrounded her. A timeless energy. That birth stars. 
sons and forge sons. Now she was part of it forever. And so Robin became the new Firefly Guardian. But her biggest adventure was yet to come. Hello, Journal. This time of the year, it gets dark so early, like the day. It's just an accident, and the night. is how the world really works. Stars and fireflies glowing in the dark. I've never actually seen a firefly. Do you think that matters, Journal? Glowing things are cool, especially in nature. On holiday in Wales, Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars. But one night, we looked down instead. The stars were shining in the water. It was like the sky got flipped upside down. We took off our shoes and socks and waded into the water. As we walked over the pebbles, They glowed beneath our toes. Grant said it was called bioluminescence. Tiny plankton in the water being moved back and forth by the tide. I knew it was just little creatures, but it felt like magic. I got up very early the next morning. I sneaked into the kitchen, got a jam jar and went down to the shore to where I'd seen the plankton. That evening, I was so excited. I carefully put the jar on my bedside table and waited for the night. But it didn't glow. I was devastated. I showed Gran the jar. She laughed. Gran always says, You can't put a cork in nature. They need sunlight and nutrients from the tide. Gran knows about those things. She used to be a marine biologist. Gran bought some special algae that would grow at home. We spent the whole day planning it. Pebbles, corals, a house, a 
company. Glass stones. Lights. Water. We took pictures for Grand's photo album for our future selves to remember. How the tank took ages to fill. How we took turns stirring the algae in. How happy we were when we had it all set. Just needs time to develop, said Fran. six days, the algae was ready. I put the tank on my desk and ran my finger through the water. My own bit of magic. Izzy. That was mum. She just got a call. She has to leave now. It sounded really bad. I have... a weird... feeling... in my... stomach. Something I don't know how to deal with. We just heard that Gran has had a stroke. I don't want to believe it. I can't lose her. Robin woke from a hazy, distant dream. Something unnatural had stirred her from slumber. Robin, a giant creature is attacking our village. Attacking? I thought the fireflies protected us. There must be something wrong. Get to the tree at once. Hurry! What creature could have caused this? And suddenly, Robin was surrounded by smoke and cinders. As she hurried past the crackling rooftops, her concern grew. Hey, Robin, you gotta hide. You can hide with us. Broken. The lift. No, there's no space. Oh, okay. Find your own hiding spot then. She looked at her burning treetop village. This was all she knew. This was home. She needed to get to the fireflies. She needed to keep everyone safe. Please, Robin, help me out. I'm trapped under this thing. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I'd be so glad to see my feet again. No, no, no. I need to get to the firefly tree. The bridge was beyond repair.
terrifying noise echoed from beyond the village gate. Robin rushed out to meet it. Soon she would prove herself as the new village guardian. I can do this. Right, Firefly? Right? But she could not deny the creeping terror. The earth yawned below her. This tree did not comfort her. It was as scared as she was. With nobody around to extinguish them, fires burned out of control. crackled ahead. Is that fire? I've never seen a flame like that. The sacred bell lay silent on the ground. realization dawned on Robin. Fireflies were gone. A new determination rose in her. She would find the fireflies. Elder Ava! Something took the fireflies. I know. Our people will fall sick without them. Don't give up hope. I'll get the fireflies back. I'll make everyone better. I promise. Go. And may the love of this village guide you. Always. Robin took a deep breath. She knew what she had to do. She was the guardian. She would bring the fireflies back home. The earth could fall away beneath her. But she would not be stopped. This was further than she'd ever been before. And yet it was... exhilarating. Wondrous. And terrifying. Fear was at her side. And hope in her heart. Things were about to get worse. Much, much worse. But Robin would not slow down. Not for crumbling paths. Mm. 
not for giant monsters. She would make it answer to her, no matter what. She would catch the dragon. No, wait! She raced forward and leapt. 